Welcome back to tutorial. In this video, we are going to discuss about financial applications. If you are taking IB Math, AISL, AIHL, AASL, or AAHL, this video is for you. The thing that we're going to discuss is the applications from geometric sequence and series. We are going to talk about two big topics. The first one is compound interest. And the second one is annual depreciation. Now let's go to it and you will see how the geometric sequence is applied in this context. Let's say you're putting money of 100,000 quits in the bank and the bank gives you two options. The first option is that you will get an additional of 2,500 quits every year. The second option is you to get 2.5% of your initial money every year. So the first time you put it, it is 100K on each case. On the simple interest, your money is just being added by 2.5K every year. And if we jump into the year 20, this is the amount of money that you have, which means it has increased 50% from your initial money. And here is the unique thing about compounding interest. So from initial money, the next year you get additional 2.5%. So it is still the same amount of the simple. But then when you are moving on to the year two, the additional is 2.5% of the 100, 2,500. So instead the initial value is 100K, the initial value is based on the amount that you have before that year. And which means that the 2.5% is always based on the initial value you have before. So this implies that we have a geometric sequence with the ratio of 100% plus 2.5%. So every term is multiplied by the ratio year by year. And we can see that the significant difference happens, let's say on the year 20, when your money in the year 20 is increased by 64% from the initial money. And if we graph the equation of simple interest, which is linear, and we compare to the exponential growth, we can see that in year 50 here, we can see a huge difference, and it's even more than 100,000 quits difference. So now let's convert our geometric sequence into the financial application formula in your formula book. So the future sequence or the nth unit that we're interested, we name it as future value. And then, the starting point, we call it the present value. And now the thing is we need to multiply with ratio and the amount of compounding, right? So the thing here is instead of we multiply with ratio with n minus one, because our initial is u zero, not u one. So the compounding is the power of n. And then we need to adjust our ratio that it is actually 100% and we add it with the interest rate percent or per 100 and we do a power of n and if you take a look at your formula book you will see that there is a k over down here and on the exponent so what does this mean sometimes banks do not only offer compounding annually but also monthly quarterly semesterly so that's why there is a compounding period in which if it's compounding monthly you need to divide the interest rate by 12 down here and which means the compounding period becomes yearly times 12 because you need to convert that into months. So let's say if it's compounding quarterly, you need to divide with four and the power of year, you multiply that with four. And if it's compounding semesterly, then you need to divide that with two and the year you multiply with two. So that's why we have K down here and k above here because this value is something that you need to be input depends on the compounding period moving on into depreciation depreciation implies that an item loses its value over time and also we have two cases let's say the first case is simple depreciation the item just loses its value by 1000 quits every year due to nature reasons so in here you can see that Every year, it is reduced by a thousand, a thousand, and if it's 20 years, it will lose into 80,000. So let's say on the other case, the item loses its value 1% each year. So this implies that every year, 
the item retains its value of 99%. So from year zero to year one, you multiply with 99%. And then from year one to year two, you multiply with 99%. You do that continuously. And let's say we go to year 20, we can see that the item retains more value in the compounding annual depreciation rather than in the simple depreciation. And let's say if we bring that into 50 years, you can see that the decay or annual depreciation graph retains more value by 10,000 quits com compared to the flat decrease of 1,000 quits every year. Thankfully, on the exam, you are only going to be tested on annual depreciation. So it's never going to be monthly not quarterly, and not even semesterly. So going back into decrease of 1%, this implies that the ratio that we keep is 100% minus the depreciation rate. So if we are talking about the future value from annual depreciation, it means that we need the present value, the price now, and then we multiply with the ratio, which is 1 minus the depreciation rate over 100 power the year. Again, we're not having the k down here and in the exponent because it will be always equals to 1. You don't have this formula in the formula book, but you can adjust it from the previous one by changing the plus into minus symbol because this is depreciation, and you can remove the k because it is equals to 1 as it is annual. For the sample practice, you can watch my previous videos that I will attach the link here. And I just want to share you some notes how to do it on your calculator. So the first is definitely you need to have the technology apps, which is TVM Solver, time value of money. And when you go into the directory, you need to always keep the interest rate in annual and put your K, the compounding period, on C slash Y. And in these cases, our compounding per year is equals to the payment per year. So if K is 6 over here, it is also 6. If K... So let's say if k is 2 over here, it's also 2. If it's 4, 4, 12, 12. Interest rate is always in annual, but then, because this is the big N, you need to multiply it with payment period per year. So let's say if this is equal to 12 and you're going to do that to 5 years, so the big N is not 5, but 5 times 12, which is 60. If you want to take a look on how it works, you can definitely, again, watch the video that I have made previously. The number four is sometimes students worry about the plus minus symbol in the calculator when they solve for present value or future value. The best use practice for this is, let's say, if you're putting money to the bank, okay, you're, the money moves out from you, so you use negative symbol on the present value. So then it will give you a result of positive future value. If it's the reverse, let's say you're taking a loan, the present value, is positive. So then the future value is negative because it is something that will be out from your pocket in order to pay the debt. Regardless, you need to finalize your answer in the statement and always in the positive value of money. Hope this video is helpful for you. If you need more practice, tutoring, and mathematical supports, you can definitely comment down below and click link on the description.